Great. Welcome back to this series of uh, Learning Simplified. In this session, we are going to understand about software as a service um, for core banking applications, SaaS core banking. So before we go to SaaS, it's important for us to understand briefly what is IAAS and PAAS, IAS and PaaS. So as we are aware, there are several cloud providers which give infrastructure as a service, which means they provide an array of uh, servers, infrastructure related to the servers, for example, the network, the, the physical data center where these are housed. Secondly came uh, platform as a service as pass, wherein the cloud providers provide the environmental softwares on which the applications run. So these could be Oracle or MySQL databases and then middlewares like WebLogic, WebSphere, et cetera. So this is the second layer known as PaaS. And again, we have these familiar cloud providers like Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, Oracle's, uh, Oracle Cloud, and of course, Amazon's AWS. And finally, we have software as a service, meaning a packaged application which runs on top of these environmental softwares, which in turn runs on the hardware infrastructure. So these applications could be ERP applications, it could be uh, CRM or customer relationship management applications, or of course, core banking applications like Terminos, Finicle, Flexcube, et cetera. So when the application is a core banking application, we term it as a SaaS-based core banking application or a SaaS cloud service for core banking. So what exactly does this mean? So it means that the core banking is split into multiple modular uh, architecture, maybe microservices based, and these modules are integrated with each other. However, the customer is free to choose any of these. So a typical customer can choose retail lending, retail DDA, and probably APIs because it's a retail bank. Or another wholesale bank might just take in a corporate DDA along with treasury. These modules or products integrate with on-premise applications. So for example, a bank may choose to retain its trade module, which is on-premise and integrate with a Pick list among these. So what are the technical layout? So you have two main components, which is the, the application layer where these are hosted as containers and managed by Kubernetes, for example. And these are connected to the database. Now the database is a multi-tenant database with each tenancy hosting a specific customer's data. This is replicated using um, replication mechanisms into a reporting database. The customers will have access only to the reporting database to have a read-only view of their data. Of course, they will have access only to their tenancy. So as can be seen here that the middleware is common. The common piece of code is used to service all the customers. It's only that the data is segregated. Similarly, if this is region one, which has the production, I will have a copy from region two, which will be a DR. So in any case, in cases of defaults inside the region one, we can easily switch over to region two, ensuring a high availability. So what are the typical features of SaaS? Typically these contracts run in for three years or more, uh, they are flexible in nature. It could be paid monthly or quarterly. Usually three environments of provision, the production, the pre-production and non-production, typically the UAT. Of course, more environments on a chargeable basis can be taken up. How is the pricing metrics? It depends on the kind of application. So for example, if it's an origination application to origin loan originations, for example, it's based on the number of applications. If it is a uh, DDA or an account-based application, it could be based on the number of transactions hitting the account. Or if it is a limits module, it could be based on the number of updates and modifications to the facility. And of course, there would be planned downtime for patches which are conveyed well in advance. So whenever there is a patch upgrade, all the customers are informed in the tenancy 
and the application is gracefully brought down when the patch is applied. So what are the pros and cons of SaaS-based application? Now, obviously it means that you really require a very low capital investment from the bank's perspective because you don't have to invest in servers, hardware, and the licenses. Everything comes on a subscription basis. So the SaaS provider gives a subscription cost, which includes that not only of the application, but also of the platforms on which they run and including the hardware on which they run. So this means that the bank have a low capital investment. This subsequently means that there is no much of a vendor lock-in. If they had invested the capital in an on-premise application, they would have been locked into the vendor to ensure that they get the complete return of the capital investment. But with the subscription-based model, the vendor lock-in is much lesser here. The SaaS-based application being a common one, the application provider ensures a continuous upgrade in a cycle, let's say semi-annual or annual, so the customer gets the benefit of being always in the latest version. And finally, last but not the least, it's a highly scalable one. It's a cloud-ready application, so hence they are highly scalable to meet the demands of the bank. So what are the cons? Of course, the main important one is that there is no customer-specific customization. Yes, there could be hooks for specific integrations which the core banking application can provide to each customer, but if it's a functional or a code customization, then it cannot be provided. Data residency issues, because right now the SaaS hosting is done in specific countries. So if the cloud provider doesn't have a presence in the country of the customer, there could be concerns raised by the regulators. And finally, although the cloud providers claim a very high uh, quality of data privacy and uh, security assessments are done regularly, this is always a perennial risk for any bank when their data is hosted on the cloud on a SaaS model. So hope this gives a very good overview of SaaS-based uh, core banking services. Looking forward to meeting you again in the next session where we go into more advanced topics related to SaaS core banking. Thank you.